Hello, Tungsten Miner here. I thought today I'd talk a little bit about my food production. I showed off my greenhouse when I did my first tour video, but there's actually quite a lot to know about how all this came about. And I mentioned that I'm using Harvestcraft to add a lot of food to the game, and I mentioned that I'm using Agricraft, which is what these kind of four sticks together are all about, uh, to grow and develop different kinds of foods. So I thought I'd walk through how that all works and how you go about making different kinds of food and uh, developing the different seeds. Uh, so the first thing to know is that when you normally install Harvestcraft, by default, there are all these little gardens that appear all over the game. And uh, they give you a lot of the seeds that you need to get started. So you don't actually have to do any crossbreeding with just Harvestcraft by itself, which is good because Harvestcraft by itself doesn't provide any ability to do that. However, when you combine it with Agricraft, um, you do get that ability. So Agricraft is a mod that allows you to develop different breeds of seeds from one another. And eventually you start getting the ability to develop seeds that are beyond uh, what Minecraft provides. So they'll give you seeds for growing different metals and different flowers and different uh, plants that just don't even exist in the game. So when you combine these two mods, what you wind up with is the ability to crossbreed different vegetables or you know fruits or berries or things together to produce other plants that uh, you don't have access to. Now, of course, if you're doing this and you've still got the native Harvestcraft gardens scattered all around the world, you kind of don't really have to use Agricraft at all because you can just look around for the gardens and find them all. So what I've done with this mod pack is to make it so that those gardens don't exist and you have to find everything on your own. In fact, you can't even find everything on your own. You have to develop everything on your own. So let's take a quick look over here. This thing is your seed analyzer. It's the central tool uh, in Agricraft. So take a look at its recipe. That's this guy over here. Very straightforward. Cobblestone sticks, a little bit of glass, no big deal. And the book that's on here is uh, this guy. And you just need crop sticks, which are themselves just four sticks together a uh, book and quill in the center, and some seeds, any kind of seeds, doesn't matter at all. That gets you an agri agricultural journal. And you can actually just take your agricultural journal and just drop it right in the table there, and then clicking this button will open it up. And you can see all of the different kinds of seeds that I've discovered. Now, I started off with no seeds at all. You don't have anything in this book, zero, nothing, to start with. As you find seeds and you drop them onto your seed analyzer, it will analyze the seed and tell you what it is that you found. So for example, if I grab these dandelion seeds, I can take them, drop them on the table, they spin around for a while, this progress bar will go across, I've already analyzed these ones so it doesn't have to, and then it'll add an entry to your book and tell you, oh, here's this seed and it was produced this way and you know, crossbred. So let's look up our dandelion. Fortunately, they're in alphabetical order because by the end you get quite a lot of them. See, dandelion, here we go. Uh, so, a little bit of information, it tells you what fruits you can get out of it, shows you what the different growth stages look like, and then the most important thing, here are the mutations that use this seed. Now, if there were ones that I didn't discover yet, this, instead of being a daisy seed, would just be a question mark. So it'd say question mark plus dandelion seed equals question mark. But since I've been at this for a while, I've got them all filled in, and that's actually true for every single seed now at this point. Um, once you've got your seeds, you need to plant them. Now, I've got this space pretty well filled up, so I'm going to take a minute and clear everything out, and um, I'll be back when I've got some space to show you how all this stuff works. Okay, back again. I've cleared out everything that has to do with actually growing stuff and left behind just the framework, just the building itself. So I've got all these trenches where I can put in the various kinds of soil that different sorts of plants require. In between, I've got these dirt blocks, which I've actually put through the chisel mod to make them, uh, one, stay as dirt and not turn into grass, and two, give them these nice thick borders that make them look like the edges of uh, a planter. And then finally, I've taken these brown leaves 
from uh, the plant mega pack and added them all over so that uh, it adds sort of a nice textured effect to the areas outside of the planter beds. So how do we get started with actually planting some plants? Well, you can start with regular dirt and drop it down in the ground, till it, and then put a source of water nearby to keep it tilled. But that cuts down on the amount of space you've got for actually doing your gardening. So I've got one thing better. Compost is created by taking any kind of plant matter and tossing it into one of these guys here, compost bin. And the compost bin is just a bunch of sticks and wood, really. That's this guy. So yeah, sticks on top of slabs. Any wood, any sticks, whatever, it doesn't matter. So you toss whatever kind of plant matter you want in here. It can be seeds, can be saplings, can be vegetables, can be grass, anything at all. Um, I think even like uh, decaying zombie flesh will work fine. And eventually it'll spit out these little chunks of compost which is what I've got over here, these guys. And you take some compost and craft it together with dirt, and you wind up getting garden soil. Now, garden soil works pretty much just like dirt, except it can't turn into grass, and when you till it, it doesn't need water nearby to stay tilled. So it's actually really super helpful in making tight gardens in indoor areas or away from water. So I've got myself some uh, garden soil here, and I'm going to start just by plopping down a bit. I'm going to till it. So now I've got tilled garden soil. I've got myself some crop sticks. I'll plant those down there. Move some of this stuff out of my way. And I'm going to go over here and just grab any old seed that I like. Um, garlic. Put the rest back. And I'm going to take my garlic seed and plant it in the tilled earth. Just a moment. Let's wait for it to get light again. Okay, so we can see we've got some kind of plant in there somehow. If we want to know what it is, we can use the magnifying glass, and that shows us it's a garlic seed, growth gain and strength are 10, it's fertile, can grow, and it really hasn't grown yet. So what are these numbers, growth gain and strength? Well, AgriCraft introduces the idea that different plants have different um, attributes. Growth is how quickly does an individual plant grow up. If I remember correctly, gain is how quickly it spreads from one crop stick area to another. And strength is how well does it resist uh, weeds encroaching on it. So in AgriCraft, you have a chance that an empty spot uh, that has just soil and uh, crop sticks will wind up getting weeds growing in it. Now, I find that really, really annoying because it means you have to constantly monitor any open areas that you're trying to you know, develop or let things spread into. And so you're constantly having to just basically stand there and watch your plants grow. Um, I get it. It adds realism. That's kind of cool, but it drives me nuts. Fortunately, there's a configuration setting that you can use to make it just not happen. So I've got the weeds turned off and I don't have to fuss about them at all. Okay, so we can see it's grown up a little bit here. 43%. Now, let's just wait here for a while until it grows up all the way. Here we are, we've got a mature plant. So I skipped over a uh, boring minute or two while this thing grew, which is actually pretty fast for crops in Minecraft. You think about your normal wheat crops and they grow a lot slower than that. Now that it's a fully grown plant though, we can do a couple of things. Uh, if I take my garden soil and plop it down there, till it, give it some crop sticks, I can put a cross crop there, and if I were to go grab another plant and put it here, then that plant would start to grow, and when it got to be fully mature, any two plants next to each other might have a chance of crossbreeding and producing a brand new species in the center. So for example, let's take a look at our book and what it says about garlic. Find our book. Let's go find the entry on garlic. Okay, so we can breed onions and ginger to produce garlic, but garlic doesn't go any further. Let's say we had chosen uh, ginger instead. So we've got onion and ginger to produce garlic. So if I had put onion here and I had put ginger there, then we could produce garlic. But what's this plant right here? Well, turns out, turns out if you have a 
a plant with cross crops right next to it, then that plant can spread into the cross crops. And if there isn't a second kind of plant in the next space over, then it's always going to grow as the same plant. Uh, and this is useful because it can have a small chance of making the seed more um, sustainable, you know, more, more uh, have its attributes improve. So here it says the seed is not yet analyzed. So we don't know what the stats are for that plant. But I know the stats for this one are 10, 10, 10, which is as high as you can go. So I can infer that the stats are 10, 10, 10 for this one too. But when you're first crossbreeding your different plants, you'll wind up with uh, a plant that has very low stats here, 1, 1, 1. So this is how you'd get the stats to increase. Just keep planting more and more sections down the line and letting your crops grow into those sections. And as they grow towards the end of your row, they're going to become higher and higher, higher stat plants. And uh, every time I've developed a new species in here, I've wound up letting it grow out that way. So that now, when I look at my box of seeds, all of these are 10, 10, 10 seeds. So when I was in the process of doing a lot of growing things in here, I'd set up one, two, three, leave a space, one, two, three, leave a space, one, two, three, leave a space. And I'd set up all of my crops so that I've now got these little three long sections where I can put one plant that I want to crossbreed, the second plant I want to crossbreed. And then I'd actually kind of have to hang around because sometimes the cross crops will get taken over by one plant or the other plant. They won't make a crossbreed. And sometimes they will. So you kind of have to come and attend to things and you know knock down the plants you don't want, put the cross crops back up. Uh, every cross crop is created by just uh, four sticks crafted together and you get four of them back again. So basically one cross, one, one crop per stick. But you need a lot of wood because you wind up using a lot of these things. You'll notice there's no cross crop here anymore. When that garlic plant moved into this area, it destroyed the extra cross crop that was on the top of it there. So you wind up just going through a lot of wood. So make sure you've got some kind of wood farm around. Okay, so the next thing to know is not all plants want to grow on regular tilled soil. So for example, I've got some blocks of sand here. I can take my sand, drop it down, plop some cross crops on there, and you can well imagine what sort of plants are gonna wanna grow on this guy. Cactus, and uh, sugar cane both want to grow on sand and they will not grow on anything else. So if I take my cactus seed and I try to plant it on dirt, it doesn't work. If I plant it there, no problem. So I can put down that. The other thing to note is that agrocraft seeds must grow in crops. So here I am clicking, 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 and that seed isn't going down. If I put down some crops, then that seed will go down. Now, of course, you've also noticed this is not even starting to grow like a regular cactus. It's going to grow in these teeny tiny little cacti, one in each corner, and kind of the same thing for the reeds. Another thing is these reeds aren't going to grow uh, multiple blocks tall. They'll always stay within the cross crops. So whatever kind of crop you're growing, it's always gonna stay within the confines of this little space, which actually for growing things like melons and pumpkins is really darn convenient. Same thing for growing cactus. You don't have to spread them out. I could have two cactus plants growing right next to each other here quite easily. Okay, so what else can we do? Well, what about plants that want to grow in water? Uh, so for example, if I look and I find some rice, I'll bring that back over here, and sure enough, does not like to grow in regular dirt. So what we have to do instead is get some water. This barrel comes from Harvest Craft, um, and you just make them Pretty simple recipe, you need a little bit of iron. Uh, da, 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 da. So here's an example of my water barrel. Iron ingots, wood down the center, can be done with copper instead, can be done with tin instead, can be done with bronze instead, can be done with steel instead. Uh, but yeah, whatever you happen to have a lot of. Uh, so what we need to do now is I'm gonna take some dirt, plop it down. I'm gonna take my diamond hoe and till it. I'm going to take a shovel and I'm going to right click it again, just like I was tilling it. 
And now I'm going to right-click it with water. So dirt, right-click with hoe, right-click with shovel, right-click with a full bucket. And that's going to produce this little kind of water patty. Now I can take my crop sticks, drop them on the top, and plant my rice seed. And the rice will grow in the little water patty. And this works for cranberry seeds, and there's a couple of other ones that need rice or need a, a water patty to grow in. And um, when you're doing the crossbreeding like this, you kind of have to know what sort of plant you're trying to get with the two on either side, because the new species will only grow into a spot that has the right kind of dirt underneath. So if I'm trying to develop a cactus seed, for example, I need to have sand under there. If I'm trying to develop a rice seed, I need to have a water patty under there. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. Uh, finally, oops, getting to be dark again. Now, sleep in a moment. Um, uh, where is that last kind of seed? Here it is. Uh, these marrowberry and flesh root seeds are from Harvest Craft Nether, and they require soul sand to have as their type of soil. So you, again, you can't plant them in just regular tilled soil. You need to have a special sort of uh, soil for them to grow in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here are the different things, and we can see this cactus has already grown all the way up, and that garlic has already grown all the way up. They uh, Once they get to the high levels, they grow really darn fast. The next important thing to know about agricraft crops is that if you left-click them, they just break. And I've got my seed back again, and it's exactly the same one. It's already been analyzed, already know what its strengths are. And since the growth factor is 10, I actually get four garlic from that one plant instead of just one. And I get uh, my cross crops, my crop back again. But if I right click instead of left click, it just harvests the plant itself. So I got another four garlic without breaking the plant, which of course means it's going to grow back a lot faster. And if I've got all of my garden set up, then I can just walk around right-clicking on all the different plants and getting all of my harvest without actually having to replant anything. So think through, oh, last time you did a big wheat field, you broke all the things, you have to go back and plant them all again. That's a, you know, a lot more work than just walking along and right-click, right-click all the different plants and get everything back again. Okay, so that's it for the kind of gardening aspect of things. Got your seed analyzer, drop your seeds in there to find out what they are. That'll add entries to your book. You can find out uh, if you have a seed and you see a question mark next to it, then uh, there's some plant that's going to be useful that you haven't discovered yet in producing some further one. And a lot of times you'll see here's a plant you know, here's a plant you know, which produces a question mark. And in that case, hey, just take those two and put them together and see if you can't develop that new seed. You also have seeds for all of the default Minecraft flower types. Uh, and unfortunately, when you harvest these, you don't get back the flower, you get back the dye. So it would be super nice if it, that were different, but uh, unfortunately that's not the case. And then finally, you can also do things like um, sugarcane, regular wheat seeds, pumpkin seeds, melon seeds, uh, carrot, potato, glow flower. Uh, this is another one of the Harvest the Nether from uh, the Harvest Craft uh, Nether version. And what these guys do is if you take the seeds, you can uh, grow them and they'll produce these glow flowers. And the glow flowers, taking three of them, can be crafted into glowstone dust. So Harvest the Nether has a lot of different plants, which basically make it so that you don't have to go on such uh, dangerous adventures in the Nether in order to get the kinds of materials you get in the Nether. And I don't think there's things for blaze rods and you know other other more uh, difficult things, but um, certainly glowstone is is one of the supported ones. Okay, so moving on with my agriculture efforts here. The other piece to show off is uh, also a bit from Harvest Craft, and that's all of the fruit trees. Now, I've got forestry in this mod too, and that also adds fruit trees, but these work quite differently from the forestry fruit trees. 
So here we are in my orchard, and you can see all of the fruit of the different kinds hanging from the trees. Now, the uh, trees are grown by taking a sapling of uh, one type or another, so jungle in this case, oak in this case, and crafting it together with the appropriate fruit. So if I craft an apple together with an oak sapling, I'll get an apple tree sapling. If I take an almond and craft it together with a jungle sapling, I'll get an almond tree sapling. Then you just plant them and grow them like regular trees. And uh, even the ones that start off from jungle saplings don't grow to be enormous big trees. The way that these can be harvested is just by right-clicking, just like the uh, agrocraft crops. So you don't have to destroy the little fruit bud. In fact, if you, you, if you um, left-click, you can see how it's going to start doing that little uh, block breaking pattern and eventually I'll have destroyed that fruit bread and it won't grow back again. It'll just be gone forever. Which in your orchard is not a good thing at all, of course. But if you're out in the wild and you do destroy one of the buds, you're guaranteed to get at least one of the fruits from that destroyed bud. So of course it's not going to grow back again, but you don't have to wait for it to grow. If you're on a big adventure and you're out and you notice a fruit tree that you haven't found before, you can actually just break one of the buds, grab the fruit, and then craft it together with a sapling to be able to plant it in your own orchard. There are a couple of trees that don't work this way though. One of them is this maple tree. This one, the maple is actually in the bark. So if I right click the bark of the tree, I'm going to get out my fruit, if you will, <laughs> in the form of these little jars of maple syrup. And uh, once the tree is full grown and everything is uh, kind of grown in, you get one per block of uh, the trunk of the tree. So I've discovered uh, a whole bunch of different ones. Um, almonds and apples and maple and mangoes and uh, what's up here? That's apricots and bananas and uh, papayas. So all of these show up in the various Harvest Craft recipes um, and, and work as you'd kind of expect them to. Paper bark, you get just plain paper. So kind of an easy way to come by paper. Um, a lot of the nuts and fruits that uh, are also overlapping with forestry can be used in forestry. So cherries, for example. You can, of course, use them in various recipes from Harvest Craft, but you can also toss them into the forestry squeezer and get seed oil out of them. So if you haven't gotten far enough along in forestry to produce the various kinds of trees that get you um, seed oils, uh, which, of course, you need for making your alvearies and the, the further along pieces of forestry, you can kind of skip ahead a little by using some of the nuts and uh, fruits from Harvest Craft. Uh, cinnamon works just like the maple tree did. Strip off a piece of bark. Uh, and I think the rest of these are all pretty much normal, you know, right click to get a fruit. Uh, durian. <laughs> durian is one of those which, uh, if you know what a durian is, you've run into them in the real world. Not surprising that there's pretty much no recipes for using durian. Uh, if you haven't run into them in the real world, then, uh, you're missing out on quite an experience. They're uh, alternately thought of as being the most horrible fruit ever or one of the nicest fruits ever, uh, more popular in uh, Southeast Asia. Anyway, so that's all of the uh, agriculture stuff that I've got going on for plants. Over on the other side of my house here, I've got some agriculture stuff going on for animals. Now, I think in the main tour, uh, the first video, I walked through what my, uh, I just walked through this table really quickly. So what I've done here is I've got individual pens set up for all the different animals. I've got lots and lots of hay stacked up in hay bales. Now, of course, it would be easier to stuff it in a chest, but it actually is kind of more picturesque to have it this way. Um, yeah, that was a project I didn't get around to finishing. Where's my other chest? There it is, down there. Uh, and then I've got a simple chest over here for the things that you can't bale up and have around. So, seeds and carrots and wheat. And I just grow more of those things as I need them in my greenhouse. So, if I want to uh, harvest some of my chickens, I'll come along and feed them seeds and then harvest 
uh, half of the adults. You know what? Actually, I'm going to go show you my kitchen. And what do I do with all this stuff? Okay, here we are at the kitchen. Uh, when I have collected all my various plants, I've got my storage drawers set up so I can just double right click on this guy and it will put everything away. And then when I want to make some food, I'll generally look around and see what do I have a lot of? And often that starts with having a lot of meat because uh, of course I've been harvesting my animals for a while now and so I've got plenty of this. And of course when you go on adventures, you, know, you might run across the cow or two here and there. So also a lot of beef. Uh, so often I'll just pick an ingredient to start with, get 16 of that, drop it on my table with whatever it is that I need to start with, and then uh, pull out the rest of my ingredients. So for example, if I wanted to do something with beef, I might uh, get 16 beef, drop it in here, and then say, all right, NEI, what can I do with beef? Well, I can make meat pies, I can make shepherd's pies, I can make pot roast, I can make meaty stew. So kind of looking at my options here. Oh, this one looks kind of interesting. Beef Wellington, great. So I need dough, I need spinach, and I need some kind of mushrooms. So and now I've got Beef Wellington. And this is a good one because obviously it cures quite a lot of hunger and uh, adds a lot of uh, satiation. So you don't need to eat again for a while. And when I'm done making whatever new food, I'll come over here to my food chest and just drop it in. And that's it. Uh, my food processing preparation system from end to end. As always, if uh, there's something you saw that you want me to talk about some more, or if you've got an idea for a future video, go ahead and leave it in the comments. If you want to see more like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And uh, likes and comments are always welcome. Talk to you later.